Pod Tackler, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast presents episode 535, Ghosts of Meridian, recorded live on April 14th, 2016. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Podtacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast. I'm your host, Dust Storm. And I'm your other host, Biowolf. And I'm your third host, Godzilla T. And welcome back. After a week of hiatus, thanks to technical difficulties last week with my computer going crazy and not wanting to work the way it needs to be, thanks to a motherboard that is giving out. But we are back to talk about some Ghost of Meridian stuff since we didn't get a chance to talk about it last week, um, since it did come out on Thursday last week which was pretty cool to see it turn around so quickly. They had the live stream and then they had the update within two days of each other. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to get back on the wagon of discussing a little bit of the campaign. So we're going to cover another campaign mission tonight. And we also have some new Pro League information that came out a little bit earlier this week as well, along with Warzone Firefight, which just dropped today. So lots of Halo news to discuss, lots of stuff to really look forward to within the upcoming week. And then we also have PAX East that's happening, not this weekend, but next weekend. And I'm actually going to be going to that as well. So that's going to be lots of fun, excitement stuff. Um, But since we have been away for a couple of weeks, it's uh, probably a good idea to kind of catch up on um, what we've been doing a little bit in our little Halo lives. So I know for me, I've been... Uh, just trying to get caught up with all the podcasts that have been lagging behind since my trip to LA. And we finally got up, caught up. We got our Halo World Championship Finals podcast out yesterday. And we had some interviews with Epsilon, Immunity, and Elevate, along with some of the casters. And that is now out. It's a hefty, I think, two hours, 15 minutes or so. So definitely recommend you guys go check it out and check out the interviews as well so that's what i've been doing uh how about you guys what have you been up to in your little halo corners work eat sleep play halo yeah it's pretty much that but just without video games (laughs) (laughs) no video games uh every once in a while i jump on but that's about it like i haven't put any kind of been trying to figure out a moving situation um so that's kind of been my main priority so i haven't really been around much lately uh, I mean, I jump on Halo every once in a while to play some arena stuff, and that's probably like four or five games, and I pop off and then probably pass out. <laughs> nice. Uh, as far as I'm, I've been aware, though, for the last couple of weeks, GT has been actually doing a pretty good job with the uh, custom nights, and I've heard some pretty good successes from that, which has been awesome to hear. And I know Bio and GT, you both have continued your rec opening videos since Bio finally got both of the recs that he was looking for. The well, th- wait. Did you get the CE pistol? You got the CE I, pistol, right? Yeah, I got the CE pistol. Um, I'm kind. I actually got it today with one of the mythic packs, so that was kind of nice. I actually just did a recording session before the podcast, so um, spoilers to anyone that actually sees the video. I did get the pistol. That's nice. Yeah, I'll be doing my recording probably Sunday, uh, Sunday afternoon. Um. I'm going to try to get some Achieving Halo recorded Saturday. So Sweet. Sweet. I will be around for that if you're going to be doing it in the morning. Uh, well, I'm going for one person that's overseas, so it's probably going to be 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, you're going the other, other overseas? So yeah. Like Australia? Yeah. Okay. Actually, yes. Cool. Uh, well, I will be busy up. at that time. <laughs> but, I'll be busy uh, then. No, I've got two people. I'm looking for one more. Uh, I've got to message them tonight and make sure they're still good for them, uh, good for Saturday. But uh, if you guys want to join in, message, send me a message. I got plenty more missions to go. I need to get in there. <laughs> I like. I actually do want to participate in it. Um, it's just this weekend I'm actually leaving again, just like every other weekend. <laughs> I haven't been. I haven't been home. But um, I need to get with you and actually. Do some achieving Halo. I would love to do a mission. Well, good. We'll try to get you worked in. Like I said, I'm pretty much going to stay recording on Saturday. That seems to be what everybody's day is available. 
So at least it works out the best. Whenever I try to do it during the week, it just it always falls apart. So well, the week is hard as well because for some p- people, it's you already mm-hmm. have stuff going on in the week, and yeah, yeah, you have life. Yes, it gets in the life way. happens. Yeah, it tends to do that. It has a bad habit of doing that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So let's go ahead and talk about the Ghosts of Meridian update that came out last week. We got some new wrecks. We got two new maps. We got a new Warzone map and a new Arena map, which are pretty cool. I haven't had a chance to play the Arena map. I actually went through and looked through it on Forge just so I could have a little bit of knowledge to when we actually talked about it. It's called Tyrant, and it's basically played on an asteroid for the most part. Uh, it's a forerunner structure that's kind of embedded in the asteroid. And it really seems like it's a map designed for Slayer and Infection, almost. The best way I can describe this map, it's a sardine can map. It is a tiny map compared to all the rest of them that they've got out there. And Very I true. I absolutely love the thing. Uh, I first got it in a free-for-all match. And once I, you know, it took me a couple uh, go rounds to kind of figure the map out, but man, free for all, it plays great. You're just far enough apart that you're not tripping over each other, but you're not having to run halfway around the map to find somebody to kill, uh, in, you know, team based it, you can lock down that map so quick, but you can lose it just as fast too. I, it plays really well. It is right now. It is my favorite map of all Good. of them. And I think for for my feeling though, it doesn't really seem like it's going to play well with objective. Maybe uh, like oddball, it might work well in, but that something like that is the only objective I really see it excel at. FFA would be pretty good. I don't think Team Slayer is necessarily a good map, and this map is definitely not designed with competitive in mind. Maybe doubles. Uh, it would make a good doubles. Doubles map. might be interesting. Um, might be might be interesting to do doubles with it. Team Slayer plays pretty good. Okay. It doesn't seem real crowded because, you know, instead of being one on five, now you're just four on four. So it it scales pretty good in the Slayer sense. But yeah, Capture the Flag or Assault or anything like that, any objective-based game like that, no. I don't think it'd play very well on that, but um, Oddball, yeah, the yeah. Holes in- King of the yep. Hill, yeah. Oh, definitely, yes. Uh, infection would probably do real well. I've never been much of an infection person, so. Well, we'll have to see what they do with infection for Halo Five because it could be a little different to the fact that it might be enjoyable once again because Halo Three with Forge and then Halo Reach infection just got out of control. <laughs> yeah, although there were some good infection maps in Halo Three, not like straight up infection stuff like Fat Kid or or that kind of stuff, but um. The one where you basically had an entire team trying to get, like, remember the one that was on Sand Trap where you, ha- you had to kind of walk up a, a huge a hill and you had the, mm-hmm. no, it was like a large ramp and then like the, the zombie was one guy in the Warthog and it was trying to splatter you as you Are went you up the ramp. Are you talking about Candy Factory? Never heard of that one. It was, no, I don't think it's that one, but, okay. well, no, it could have been, it could have been. It was where basically you had to go around. There was a guy in Warthog, and it was basically the objective for the infected was to go around and um, kill everyone in the Warthog, or kill everyone, and splatter them with the Warthog. Um, I don't know if that's the same. There's probably a different variation of it, but it's probably the same concept. It could be. Pins is asking if it might be too small for a Fiesta, and I don't think it would be because of how closed off a lot of the stuff is and the map how it's designed. I haven't played this in person again, but just from what I was able to look at and forge, it seems like there's a lot of emphasis on close quarters with a few long sites. So there's, there's very few of them compared to like a lot of the rest of the maps, which have some very open uh, line sites. I think before this map overgrowth was probably one of the more closed off maps, but this one really kind of focuses on really getting that close quarters combat. So I think Fiesta might be a might be a good one for this map. I want to I want to put something out there though. Um, since you mentioned over overgrowth, uh, one of the things that I actually really enjoyed was uh, strongholds on overgrowth. It I've never had a more intense game on that map. Like I think that's probably the like I've never really cared for the map because I didn't like the way it was 
laid out. It was kind of small, and everything was kind of on the edges of the map. But for some reason, Strongholds really brought that map's potential out. Um, huh. Like, I just, I never had, I never had Strongholds on that map before. And it's just, like, people are like, why are you bringing this up now? It's, I've just now played it on that map. And since you're going to Arena Slayer and there's more objective stuff, I've noticed it popping up a little bit more. And that map, man, it's nuts. That was my first Killtacular. I got my very first Killtacular in that game on that map. Huh. So. I've never, never played an objective on that map, I think. Well, now that I've I think strong, about it. I've played Strongholds on it several times. Strongholds it's a lot of plays fun. really well. It's a lot of fun. Well, I guess to that point as well, whenever I go into arena, unless I'm playing with a party, which most of the time ends up being big team, unless we don't have enough people on Tactical Tuesday, I'm playing SWAT to get my daily. <laughs> so I'm not playing uh, objective that much because it's really I'm, I'm in there with a the party. But I have to try to get a party this weekend and actually try that and see how it feels. Yeah, and like, Something to go on to that point, though, which was really interesting. We've talked about this on, this on the podcast several times about people not interacting with each other in party systems. This was the very first game that I've ever had. The same game, uh, Stronghold, was the very first game that I've ever had that no one communicated with each other. And everyone seemed to know where they're aiming at, which was really nice. Like, I don't really know how to describe it. Like, usually you get in a, like a group of people that don't really go with each other. Like, they're kind of all over the place. Everyone mm-hmm. kind of stuck together and kind of. Did. I have I have the gameplay footage and I'm, re- I'm baiting whether or not I want to release it or not. But it was one of the best games I've ever played in Halo so far. So I mean I'm kind of over exaggerating on constantly being on this map, but I've really come to like that <laughs> a lot. Now, that's good. I had one of my best games in free for all during uh, this last week. I went ahead and tried to rank in free for all. But anyway, uh, I had one heck of a comeback. I'm thinking about putting that one on my channel. I I was cool. down like 10 kills and came back and won it. So I was impressed with myself. Anyway. Very nice. Back to Ghost of Meridian. Yeah. Sorry on the tangent. <laughs> that's It's all right. We're, that's actually a very minor tangent compared to some tangents that we've had in the past. True. So the, ne- the next map that we have is Skirmish at Dark Star. And I've actually played this map. I think three times so far since it came out and it's very, very small compared to other Warzone maps. It looked like it was from the live stream. It looked very small. Yeah. Battle of Noctis like grew the size of it. And, and I guess the, the Spire one, uh, I forget what that one is. Um, that one is kind of wide open, but Skirmish at Dark Star really pulls things very close together. It does not take very much effort to go from the fortress to the armories. It's really quick. So it's basically more CQB range rather than long shot at this point with this map. No, no, no. Really? A per- a person with a sniper can be very effective on this on this map. The funny thing is, is yes, it's the smallest map. I mean, it it can almost almost compared to the others, it feels like an arena map, but. You still get good vehicle gameplay. There's plenty of places for snipers. And you get the close quarters. Because they have hallways and passages between the bases. So you get that you get that CQC combat, but you can still get the long range combat. I was I played a match and I was sitting on the West Armory shooting people at the East Armory while the rest of my team was trying to take it. I was picking off the other team as they spawned outside the base. And I was just there with a regular sniper rifle. And the nice thing is, is that the really big bosses, they're just right there in the middle of the map. Hmm. So you think this map would be very well balanced then? Compared, like it, it has some issues, but overall, I like it. Okay. Because you can, no matter what your play style is, it has an area for you where you're not just kind of sitting there spinning around in circle and waiting for somebody to show up. You know, for some, most of these maps, yeah, you drive around, if you're a vehicle person, you drive around a lot, but you don't really see that many people because they're all either in the middle of the map or all in the buildings around the outside. So you don't get that many kill opportunities unless you happen to find where they're running across or you take the vehicle someplace you really shouldn't be. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, no, I haven't I haven't had a chance to play any of the new maps, so 
it's good to hear that they actually from your standpoint that it seems to be a little bit because like when I first seen it on the live stream, it seemed very small. I didn't think I would like it. Um, but it, the fact that you're putting it is it has very good ve vehicular warfare on it and not so much as long uh, sniper ranges gives me a little bit more hope on it, honestly, because sniping in, on Warzone is my thing. I love doing sniping on it. It gets a lot of people aggravated. Oh, there's, a lot of there's lots of places that you could you can post up and do some sniping. OK, cool. And, you know, really be effective. You're not just sitting there waiting for that one person to run across the map. The, uh, I mean, really about the only thing, and I just came across this yesterday, is one of the bosses is a mantis. And apparently they figured out that it's extremely vulnerable to being splattered by rake. Do what? You can splatter it with a rake. How if does you that? Boost, if you boost, just as, you know, you get in range and you boost into it, it will it will knock the shields off of it and if it hasn't already lost some health it'll it'll knock the health really down low or it will flat out kill the mantis that's interesting yeah i saw that the other day and i'm or yesterday and i'm like well that's just not even cool does that happen to a normal mantis i don't know but you'd think an ai boss would be a little tougher cuz i think it's i think it's 100 and 100 point or 150 point boss. Yeah, I think it's a legendary. So it's 150 points. And when you can take I mean, it, the the thing popped up and it was alive maybe 30 seconds. Yeah, the bosses are really quick to take out except for the first one. The first one is is takes a little time because everyone is still using low level loadout yeah. weapons. But, but still, you know, when that boss comes in, it needs to have enough health to combat the higher rec levels. See, I'm still a little hesitant with this map, with Skirmish at Dark Star, because there really isn't much or a, a good variety of areas you can take vehicles compared to some of the other maps. I think if, if there's only it's like a few pre predetermined paths that you can take. Um, once you open the gates, it's a little more free-flowing, but I've only seen vehicles amass in very specific locations so i i don't i personally don't exactly agree with the good vehicle combat for this map because it, it feels like at least from the few times i've played most of the vehicles have camped at one area and they they're just barraging certain areas where you would be coming out and spawning and because the map is so small a lot of the spawn points are very cluttered together and you'll just get decimated so for example there was a uh, on one uh, one playthrough, there was a tank on the other team sitting just outside of West, and they were just barraging the top and bottom entries from the fortress. And like the tank sat there for a good two minutes, just doing that over and over again, and was getting some decent amount of kills with it too. That's aggravating, though, for the opposing team. That's got to get some people pissed. I didn't say it was perfect. You know, that's one of the other complaints that I have that your larger vehicles like the tank and the wraith, they can almost set up like stationary gun turrets. And you just, if you've got a good setup on the map, like your team has one of the armories and fortress, they can set right out the outside fortress and just keep you pinned down in, in your armory. But when it comes to vehicles that I tend to use, like the ghost and a warthog, which are the ones that I most commonly use, um i see those get works, torn up really quick they they do get torn up really quick if you have if you have a gunner that doesn't doesn't uh pay attention to what's going on and a driver that puts the warthog in places that he shouldn't be because i was driving and i had a gunner and the gunner went on a rampage wow that's impressive that's crazy you know and i was getting you know i was getting splatters i i think i got I think I got 10 splatters or something like that, but it's, it just, I have more luck on that map with vehicles than I do any other. Fair enough. The other thing on this map too, which Pins is actually alluding to a little bit in the chat when he says he's been farmed more for kills on this map than any other map is if you're going up against a, a decently good team, not necessarily a, a star team, but a decently good team, you can, it's very easy to overwhelm the other armory at the start of the game 
and choke the enemy team in into their base. It's very easy to do that on this map. So if if you don't if you lose that armory at the very beginning, chances are you're not going to be getting out. Chances are that you're just you're just going to be s- just spawn trapped in in your base because because it is so condensed because it is so close even if people are spawning in fortress or the other armory it takes very little time to get back to that other armory and at the same time get in front of the other base because it's so close yeah it is it can be a problem on that if you don't have a coordinated team and you don't protect your armory but i've even i've had that happen on uh arc escape from arc yeah that's the one with the the snow one right no no what is that one uh i'm drawing the blank where you know you have the you have your home base I know what armory, you're talking about. yeah i know you're talking about think of yeah. the name. but anyway i've i've played a game there where the other team they took their they had some people taking their armory you know one or two Every other person on their team rushed our armory. They took our armory and then they went back for fortress. Yeah, but at least there's a distance between the armory and the base, whereas... That was the first five minutes of the game. No, I I get that. But from all the other maps that we have for Warzone so far, the distance between the immediate first base and the core room or the core base... uh, has been drastically reduced in this map. Mm-hmm. Every other map, there there is some amount of distance, and you have to at least make a little bit of an effort to actually get eyes on the doors of the other base. Where this one, you can sit on on top of it, and and you're pretty much halfway there if you were on the the snow one. March on Stormbreak, thanks, pins. Yes, but same thing for it's... escape escape from uh, ARC. There. If you are on the armory, you can't see the doors of the base. It, it gives, but you can it's camp a right outside the base. Yeah, but there's a buffer between the base doors and the immediate first out for all the other maps. On this one, there's no buffer. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't exactly call it much of a buffer, but I mean, yes, the uh, escape from arc, your base, your main base is further away from your armory because you have to actually go around the corner. But, and then the spire one, you have to go quite a distance. Yeah, the spire I mean, one, that is the of, furthest one. But yep. you know, they don't have to be that close to pin you in your base. I mean, whenever that happens to me, they're pinning us down from basically our armory at least that distance away until they get the right levels f- up, and then they'll start bringing in tanks and wraiths and ghosts. And I mean, March, start- on, March on Stormbreak, I think, is really kind of the only one that has that. In my opinion, with everything else on the um, having something to kind of block or at least the other team has to get down there, there's at least a chance for you to kind of get out a little bit. Whereas Skirmish at Dark Star, that just doesn't happen. Even if they're like... It's just, more exaggerated on that one. I will agree with you on that. Yeah, like the distance from the fortress to the front of the base doors and then the fortress being the middle base is about the same as it were if you were doing the armory on Escape from ARC to the front doors of the base. Mm -hmm. At least that's what it feels like for me. Like like we've said before, they just need to find a way to get, to take away the lure of farming kills. Whether it's changing up spawns, penalizing, having one of their bases just become not theirs anymore. You know, there's been a hundred. Yeah, there's been a hundred different discussions on that. But like I, I think said, we should we could have a podcast dedicated to that discussion. We probably we could, could. Probably could. Yeah. 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 Anyways, a lot to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. But we, overall, we, I like the map. Uh, it's yeah, it's, it's a pretty good map. I've, I've enjoyed you know, I don't it jump for, for the times I played on it. I don't jump for joy when I see it, but uh, I've I've really. I hate to say this, but I've really become disillusioned with Warzone. It honestly is not much fun for me most of the time. Now, don't get me wrong. I'll have games where I'll get a team and we'll do really well, but it's Lester. Is they kind of need Warzone customs. Me. They need Warzone customs. That would be sick. But That'd be the, uh, awesome. Oh, yeah. The uh, new mode that 
we're testing this week weekend is showing real promise for me. Good. We'll discuss that here in a little bit. He's talking about Warzone Firefight in case anyone didn't catch that. Uh, there's still a couple other things to discuss from the Ghost Meridian update, though. We have some new Forge weather effects, which is pretty cool. So for all you Forgers out there, there's some new toys to play with. The new weather effects include rain, proper rain, which is really cool, snow, papers, embers. So think of like volcanic ash ember type stuff, dust, and moats. So if you're trying to forge something aesthetic, there's some new weather effects that you can use to add to your map. And uh, there's actually some new forge pieces that have been added as well. Uh, I, uh, is, let me see if the list is at the bottom. Uh, yeah, so if you have the update, if you go to the update, there's uh, quite a few new things that they've added in here. So they've actually added one-way shield doors, which is nice. I know there's some been some custom games that were made in Reach that utilize those very much. Um, think of Invasion. Basically, we can get Invasion back. Didn't they add shield doors that would only let people through and not vehicles? They did that as well, yes. Yeah. Well, there was, there was a problem with that. With um, Me and Duquesne were trying to do some force stuff like a couple weeks ago. That was something that he was really hoping they would bring in as a one-wheeled shield door. Because he was looking to, uh, for his uh, new sniper mole map, um, you drop down. And for some reason, when you dropped, it would, like, I forgot exactly what the issue was. But this one-way spawn door um, is something that he actually kind of freaked out about seeing that they put in which is really nice i mean the weather infects and all that stuff is incredible as it is but i'm really happy that they put that in there because there's a lot of game types that actually rely on that that i never realized Mm-hmm. many things invasion is kind of one thing though yeah so that would that'll be really cool to although for in- invasion we need the, the, we need a couple other little game mechanics added in there before invasion would truly work but it still is something that could be done i think I'm sure if someone puts it on a list, they'll show up. Well, I guess if you can make strongholds capturable by only one team, maybe that would work. Mm, maybe. That's maybe. the only thing I can think of that might have some promise. The only thing I can honestly think, though, is um, oddball. Or, uh, yeah, just have oddball to make it to where one team can uh, grab it and only only one team can hold it at a time. Uh, oh, way and they can of... plant it. They yeah. can plant the bomb. Oh, yeah. that's actually not a bad idea. All right, let's get some forgers on that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> remaking. Inv- well, and if you think about it, one of the things that one of the, like the objectives that was in Reach, like if you think about Breakpoint, one of the things was you took a bomb in to plant, and that was one of the stages. Yep, that was uh, that was that was on. Well, it was on a couple of them, but it was Spire was the biggest one, wasn't it? For Reach, when you had to. Uh, the, no, there wasn't that. a bomb. There wasn't a bomb on Spire. The breakpoint was the one that had the bomb. And then once you planted okay, the yeah. bomb, it unlocked the core. Right. That's that's what I was thinking of. All right. Yeah. So, and then to your point, GT, what you mentioned with the vehicle stuff, there's vehicle blockers. I think that's what you were getting at. Yeah. Yep. It's basically just a, a door that will only let people through and not yep. vehicles. Yes. Uh, they added a bunch of new sounds. So there's a horror sound. There's a covenant chant sound, animal sounds. Water sounds, more nature sounds, crowd sounds, uh, urban alarms, and all that fun stuff. Uh, canisters, soda cans, holograms, fusion barrels, uh, a bush plant, grass plants, uh, ring shapes, doors, uh, more shields, uh, gravity volumes. Well, there's lots of people that are going to be happy about that. Yeah. Uh, two-way shield doors. Um so if someone wants to do a snowbound remake, you can do that. Uh, ivy plants, uh, more trees, more grass, uh, and plated covers. So that's all the new Forge stuff. Oh, and you can... Sorry, there's one more thing. You can actually uh, change the starting energy of a weapon. So the energy for like uh, Promethean weapons that use energy or Covenant weapons that use energy, you can actually change that now. So cool stuff there. Uh, so that's the Forge stuff. There's some new wrecks, which I think uh, quite a few people have been really interested in the new hammers, which has been uh, crazy. So has anyone gone up against one of the Tartarus, gra- gra- uh, 
Tartar gavels. Sc- gavels. Yeah, and that thing's ridiculous. That thing's nuts. Yes. I have not had the pleasure yet, um, but I've watched some footage of it. Um, yeah, I've seen it used. I haven't been on the tail end of it, thankfully, yet. Um, I watched a video today. Tartar Scavel. I Spiteful? Yes, I Spiteful. Yep, Tartar I Scavel saw that one, too. <laughs> and four speed boosts. Oh, my Lord. Mm-hmm. That thing is a beast. Yeah, it is. I mean, oh my gosh, that thing is nuts. I mean, even the one below it's not that bad. I, I can't think of the name of it now, but uh, the grinder. Yeah, the grinder. And another cool thing about this update too. Sorry for tangent, but they actually gave everyone a Ghost of Meridians rec pack, so you got three of the new weapons at the start of the update, which I thought was a really cool, cool addition thought, to it. I thought it was too. That gives everybody a chance to actually play with some of his stuff yeah and not have to wait on random luck to get them yeah although although i did i think i got like let's see i did a wreck opening right after that and i got three of the three of the four blue steel skins nice and i got some of the some of the armor but and i think i got one of the weapons other than in the ghost of meridian pack so I'm not having nice. good luck with updates those blue steel when it comes to weapons. Those blue steel skins look sick. Oh, they do look pretty cool. That. I, I was really surprised on how they look. Like when I first seen them, I was like, "Yeah, all right." Then actually seeing up and like using them, they look really sleek. Like I, I didn't think they were that mint looking. I still like my bald eagle. I got my lone wolf one. I'm not taking that off. It took me way too long to find. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably once I get the DMR skin, I'll probably put it on the DMR. Uh, yeah, but the uh, the bald eagle skin for the uh, assault rifle that uh, I just can't leave that one. I can't take that one off. Uh, what's mine right now? I forget. I'm checking since I got my Xbox right here. Turned on. Uh, I am rocking. I guess for the AR, uh, the steel one, which is, has the yellow accents on it. Um, then I have um, bloodthirst for. Uh, the BR. Actually, I'm gonna change that to gold standard since I have that. DMR. I have prestige, which is the yellow and teal one. And then, actually, I'm gonna change that one to gold standard too. <laughs> Yay, gold standards. SMG. I have potence. And then my magnum is the Boomco Magnum. If I get the Boomco Magnum, I may change it. Yeah, the Boomco Magnum is pretty cool. There are a lot of good AR skins, I will say. Yeah. Now, my favorite one so far is. It's I'm stuck between Osiris team and uh, ODST. Like those are my two favorites right now. Nice. ODST is a solid choice. Yeah, I like the bright colors on it. You kind of stands out. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be it. So yeah, and then the other hammer which we didn't mention yet is the Corpse Maker. Uh, it has a faster swing time and increased lung range. So, and we had two new suppressors get added. Uh, the Song of Peace, which has a faster fire rate, increased energy capacity, and a higher reserve ammunition capacity. And then the Razor's Edge, which uh, is basically shoots needles, kind of. It has basically shards, and then they super combine. And both of them will tear you up. Razor's Edge is so much fun to use. I've picked it up. I've still got mine that I got in the pack. But I've picked it up off the ground a couple of times, and oh man, I was like, I want to wait until I get more of them. <laughs> yeah, I think the first time I picked it up, or like the first time I used it was when I picked it up, and then uh, after I picked it up, I'm like, ooh, I like this one. So I went and I think that might have been one of the things I unlocked with silvers first, because I actually got all the silvers from this rec set done. Um, but I think the Razor's Edge was one of the first certifications I got. So after I picked it up and used it, I'm like, oh, wait, I'm going to try this because I haven't tried it yet. So I went and picked a Razor's Edge when I spawned next time. Yeah, there, the, it's that Razor's Edge. Oh, jeez. And it tracks hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. But so much fun to use. I've yet to see it or play with it, honestly. Well, the nice thing about it is it has a longer range, a longer lock-on range than a needler. And it's, well, yeah, because it's a suppressor. Get, yeah, it's and it it 
almost acts like a precision weapon. It's just it's because of how so much, much damage it deals. Use. Oh yeah. 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 No, I, I get what you're coming out with that. It's it's fun. I don't know. I don't know how they've been able to manage to keep like at least the feel of balance. Maybe it's just because there are so many players in it and because there are so many power weapons at one time in Warzone. But it doesn't feel like any one weapon is just completely overpowering for a given like scenario of running through Warzone because people can spawn in new stuff. So it makes it a really fun experience. Yeah, pretty much the only weapon I think I have see get used more than others are snipers, whether it be beam rifles or just regular snipers. But as far as your mid to close quarter range weapons, it's all over the map. Uh, BR, DMR, light rifles, carbines, all the varieties. And then you get, you, know, you get into your suppressors and stuff. I see all of them. Rail guns. I, yeah. I think I deal more with rail guns in Halo 5 than I have in all of a Halo 4. It's it, it, most of the web for most everything. It you get a good mix. That whiplash, though, you got I I see that <laughs> thing left and right. It's it's everywhere. I mean, I'm one to blame. I'm one of the people that usually use it because I get a crap load of them, it seems. But you can do some you can tear up the enemy team pretty fast with that thing. Like that is that's probably my favorite wreck in Halo 5 right now. It is pretty handy, especially for taking out vehicles and cores. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Just getting invisible, getting an invis, and then let your uh, buddies drop the that whiplash or whatever, and let them drop in. They go in there and then take out the core. It's game over at that point. Yep. I've had, I want to say, four clips I've recorded of me sneaking in a core room with camo and a railgun and destroying the core. They're just super effective that way. <laughs> I keep forgetting I can do combinations. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a good gun. And and the thing is it's not like I'm surprised it's not higher than what it is. Like I would think it'd be an ultra rare or something like that, but it's not, which is nice. Yeah. Speaking about ultra rares, or more so legendaries, we have two new vehicles. The Hannibal Mantis and the Hannibal Scorpion, which are insane. They are basically uh, instead of machine gun uh, turrets for the Mantis and the, um, the normal tank round on the Scorpion, they have Gauss cannons. So the Mantis has a, a rapid fire Gauss cannon and then the Scorpion has a um, a fast discharge laser on it. That I mean, But it looks kind of looks like a, a real gun for the most part. But those things, if you go up against those things, those have some some damage to them. Yeah, you're pretty much done. You ain't got to stand against them unless you're from behind. Even in that case, it's not usually a good deal. <laughs> I think I may have seen one in Warzone so far since the update dropped. Uh, I think, and I think it was a Mantis. I've seen two of the Mantis, and I've seen about eight of the tanks. I've seen more Mantis than I've seen Wraiths. Or mantis, or wow, I can't think more of the tanks. I've seen more mantises <laughs> that way. They seem to come out. Well, last everybody, minute too. if I remember right, everybody got a tank with the pack. Oh, was that guaranteed? I didn't. Well, you got the mantis. I didn't get either one. I got. You I got. The, I just got weapons in my rec pack. I just got weapons. I got the tank in the in the meridian because everybody yep. I've talked to either got. Well, everybody I talked to got the Scorpion. I will check real quick. Huh. But I don't think I got any vehicles. Oh, nope. I take that back. I got the tank. You're right. Okay. Nope, the tank is there. Mantis is not. I have about 30% more left on all my wrecks. Man, you get up there. All I have is golds left. I got a lot of more. I have a lot more silvers I'm tackling right now. Right now, the game is being a pain and not giving me any DMRs. Uh oh! I've gotten two, and I got those like the first month that I was playing the game, and I haven't got one since. So you have two DMRs unlocked? Yes. Or just okay, and yeah, there's quite a few of them. I think I have yeah maybe seven DMRs unlocked. I think, but yeah, there's there's still quite a few to to get on that front. 
So those are the two new vehicles that we have. And then, of course, we have some new wrecks to go along with that stuff. We have uh, two new armor sets, which is the the Mark V Alpha Reflex, which is a legendary mythic um, armor set. And then there's the Dynast armor set. Uh, then we have the Blue Steel skins for all the loadout weapons. We also have a uh, Glacier Visor, which is basically a deep blue visor. Grenadier uh, armor mod, and then we have a new animated emblem. So there's actually six new emblems, but one of them is animated. It's the Super Combine. So basically, take a little like uh, doll, and then you have Niels in it, and it's actually animated, which is really cool. That's probably my favorite emblem that we've seen so far. It's the one it's I'm so using. Cool. Yeah, it's the one I'm using right now too. I'll put the the last light one back on at some point, but I'm still rocking the last light one. Until I get my Spartan. Oh, okay. Gotcha. But uh, there's a Staketacular emblem as well. I haven't seen that one pop up yet. We had one person that had that today. Nice. Uh, Distraction. Uh, There's also a Money uh, Eights. And Dog Pound. And Soul. So those are the six emblems. Then there's the Pink Mist Stance, which is basically just standing there with the arms to the side and are holding a Needler. And then there's two new assassination fisticuffs, which is basically you put someone on the ground, you're just punching them with fisticuffs. That one's funny. <laughs> I actually got that one. That one's pretty hilarious to use. Yeah. And then there's take a look. That one's brutal. That one is very brutal. Ugh. <laughs> it's a good thing this game's rated T because <laughs> you can imagine like the gore that would come out of that one. That would. Ugh. Yeah. No blood. Uh, and that's it basically from the update side of things. Uh, just checking through real quick. Obviously, there's some other patch notes things that are being put in there as well. Um, so they fixed a lot of different, uh, things with little bug fixes that they've, they always do. But one cool thing that they've added in now is that your teammates in your party show up green on your kill feed. Anyone else notice that? I noticed it was a different color, but I didn't know it was green. Yep. I didn't notice that. Yeah, so if you're in a party, uh, teammates in your party will now show up green in your kill feed. Hmm. That's interesting. I didn't notice that. It's good to know, though. Yeah. Uh, but everyone else is still blue, and then you have red, obviously, for the other team, and then yellow for yourself. So that's really cool that they're, they're still doing that. And then the other thing, too, now, is that in your rosters, you have your Spartan Company. Yes. That was really cool that they added that. Yes. Should have been there at the beginning, but... Yeah, I know, right? But that makes things so much easier for company events now. No kidding. So much easier. So thank you for that, 343, because that was definitely yes, needed. thank you very much. That was needed so much. Indeed, it was. I mean, now you can just go through and see who's actually online, too, and just go ping them an invite. It's a lot easier that way, rather than just going through an entire friends list. Yep. And that means you don't have to add everybody on your friends list either. Nope. Exactly. It, that, cause that can be a pain to sort through your friends list to find everybody in your company. Yeah. Because there's nothing in your friends lists to tell you that they're in your company unless you've got your co- the roster on the your computer next to you. Yeah. And then being able to go in and seeing the company and then just seeing all, who's online is like, okay, invite, 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 invite. Makes it so easy. Mm-hmm. So that that was the other big thing for me is having that in there. Oh, and one of my favorite game modes is back. DMR slot. <laughs> Someone else, I think Pins was saying that also in the chat too, that he yeah, was really looking. Pins said that a little earlier. Really excited about that. But, oh, yes. I got, I've got, I've only gotten to play two games, but oh man, I missed that from Reach. Good. <laughs> I, I, I like SWAT. It's my favorite game type overall. I just, I don't know why, but I've always liked SWAT. And DMR SWAT to me is just more fun. I'm not any better at it. I just, I have more fun with it. Yeah. That, I don't know. What do you think of it? Or have you even got to play it yet? So actually when I was playing either yesterday or the day before to get my arena dailies, it, when I usually do SWAT whenever I do my arena dailies. And... I think the first three games I had were all DMR SWAT. Jerk. (laughs) 
Uh, needless to say, I don't think... I, I think I lost the first two and then won the third. Or maybe I didn't win the first three and then there was a BR swan. Maybe I won that one. I'm not sure. I don't remember exactly. But it's um, it's all right. I think I prefer the BR one just because you have that the three chances to get a headshot with the BR, which I know is kind of a little noobish, but it is what it is. Noob tube. No, it's not the noob tube. That would be the grenade launcher. I know. I which know. It'd be really cool to have that back with the Memories of Reach DLC. No kidding. That'd be sick. I really yeah, wish would. they would. I hope they bring it back. I think they would. I th- honestly think they would, only because like it's that was a really hot item in Halo Reach. Yeah. So I was actually on Drunken Halo this week, and one of the questions I think that came up was, what was my favorite weapon? And one of the things I mentioned was, through all of the new weapons that have been added since Halo 3, I've I've liked some new weapon in that. So... Like my fit, my the most fun weapon to use for me in Halo Three was the Spartan Laser, and then in Halo Reach it was the Grenade Launcher, and then in Halo Four was the Railgun, and then Halo Five is the Plasma Caster. I I have to admit I've had some fun with the Plasma Caster. I did it. I got a kill tacular the other day with it, and I'm still trying to figure out how I did it. So it's very useful for clearing out armories. I have found in Warzone. That's like yeah. whenever I, whenever I'm getting frustrated in the armory and I just need to go in and clear it out. I'll just take a uh, plasma caster or whatever the one is above it that has the two that shoot out, and I will just go to town. And I can get just stack kills with it like no one's business. It's so much fun to use that because it's basically like the grenade launcher, except it's just plasma instead. Yeah. Bounces like it and everything. Yeah. I'm going to have to try that. I've got plenty. Yeah. It, it's. I'll start, I'll start using that. The white plasma caster is crazy. Uh, I forget what what does the white plasma caster do that the uh the other one doesn't. I'm looking it up. I think I have one in my set of weapons here. Uh, the white scar fast plasma caster that fires modified bolts to proximity detonate if if hip fired, and have a needler fragmentation effect. Ooh, I'm gonna have to play around with that one a little bit. Needles are fun I've in got Halo. One of those too. I've got five. So. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Uh, I think another bug fix that people were really happy to see too is that whenever you have speed boost activated, the Spartan charging now kills upon impact um, for just a standard shielded Spartan. So that pretty much covers the update for Ghost of Meridian. Uh, there's a few other bug fixes as well um, that they also listed. Uh, it's a freaking long uh, change list for Ghost of Meridian, but it's there. Lots of cool stuff with the update, which is really fun. And... Uh, I need to see if I can get a actual game of Tyrant at some point, because that's the only thing I really haven't experienced yet from the update so far. So another thing that kind of got released today was Warzone Firefight, the beta. And they had some rough start getting it uh, up and running. So it's actually, as of this recording, it is available now and it's going to go through until Tuesday, April 19th. So we got a full extra day to mess around with this. Yeah, you know, it's really sad that I have to work tomorrow and Monday and Tuesday. Well, you know. Because it's going to take away my, from my playing time. Well, it'll be back. And it'll be better when it's back. I'm going to miss it. <laughs> It'd be kind of like that time between Halo 5 Guardians Beta and Halo 5 Guardians. It was a sad time. And that you had to wait nine months to play it again. Yeah, it's... uh. I I've played it for about two and a half hours tonight after I got home and I was having an absolute blast. I was burning rack. I didn't care because I can pull the rack out and actually get to use it and not just insta die. It will. In most cases there, there are some times that that happens, but it hangs around long enough that once I respawn, I can go pick it back up. Yeah. I got, I pulled an answer out for the first time in probably a month. Because I don't get as many as I used to, so I tend to hang on to them. And I was just ripping through some nights. Cool. And it felt, oh, geez. It was so good to sit there and watch, just hold that trigger down and listen to the thump and watch the health just fall away. <laughs> well, I mean, to your point, too, with normal Warzone, you could spawn in with a weapon and then five seconds die. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was and like, then somebody oh. else picks it up. So. I'm I'm okay if someone else on my team picks it up. 
Because at least that means it's being used in favor of the team. It's really frustrating when the enemy team picks it up. Yeah, that's usually what happens to me. The guy that just killed me picks up the weapon I just spawned with. Yeah. But the way they're doing the firefight, I like. It harkens back to the older firefights, but it doesn't duplicate it. You basically have five rounds or five waves, however you want to look at it. Some of the objectives that they give you, and it's a random selection for each level, The uh, some of the objectives you get have two parts to them. Like you have to kill this set of bosses and then the mythic set of bosses come in. Uh, they have another one where you get the the final wave. You get the boss wave all come in at the same time, but you have one of them is you have two regular wardens and then you have a mythic warden. Yeah, I saw the mythic warden on the stream. He, honestly, you better save up your wreck for him because you're going to want to bring out the big guns. And I don't care what it is. The biggest, baddest, most powerful thing that you can you have in your inventory for him. He takes a lot to kill. But at in the same sentence there, he's still fun to fight. I mean, the other two wardens, they're just the typical warden. But this mythic guy, uh huh, he will hunt you down. <laughs> I am not, you know, the, the other wardens would chase you a little bit if you were close. Right. This guy will, you know, if you duck around and hide behind a box, he'll come find you. Dun, dun, dun. Um, he has similar attacks. The beam attack is a little different. Does a lot more damage. Uh huh. Um, but like I said, he, he's actually kind of fun to fight. Yes, he is a bullet sponge, but when you're fighting him, you don't really feel that way as much because one, he moves around and it seems like whoever's doing the most damage to him is the one he's attracted to. That kind of makes sense. Right. Then that's really the best way to have the AI respond is it? Is if you're doing the most damage to him, that's where the attention should be really gathered towards. So, but that's awesome to hear. And one of the cool things I saw from the stream, which for those of you who may have not caught it, they did a live stream on Tuesday, uh, the 12th, kind of showing off what Warzone Firefight was. And one of the cool things, which I don't think you've touched on quite yet, GT, but every time that you're running Warzone Firefight, the scenarios that you're going through are different. So you could have a different set of enemies or different objectives for each round every time you're going into firefight, which I think is great for replayability. Oh yeah. The tonight, the you know, most people, the one they're gonna notice the most is the first one when you spawn in. Mm -hmm. Of all the games I played, I only got the first one once. Or I only duplicated the first objective once. And then, like I said, I played for two and a half hours and they rotated through the objectives. And well, at least I think it was, it was only once or twice. They have a limited amount of object objectives because it is the beta, but it, as far as noticing the repeat. Yeah, I knew I did it before, but it just, it didn't feel repetitive except for when the, you have to defend the garage. That one is just, I cringe when that one goes up. <laughs> Yeah, Pins said in the chat he thinks the garage defense is harder than the final boss kill. In a, in a way, it is. If you can stay inside the garage and hiding by the upstairs rec, rec station is a legitimate strategy, it, it works as long as there's at least two of you there. Uh huh. But as long as you can stay inside, you're good because one, they don't capture the base, and two, you get shelter from the Phaetons. But they, I mean, one, in one point, I was upstairs. And there were 25 Prometheans in the base. I saw that on the stream, too. I think it got up to 27 at one point. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. They do not hold back. Yeah. And that was one of the things when I saw that, I'm like, okay, I'm sold. Because instead of just having to kill enemies over and over again, they actually incorporated an objective into it that's already based in Warzone, which was defending a base. So they basically took a thing from Warzone Assault and the AI are attacking it, which is really, really cool. I yeah. thought that was really awesome to see. And the nice thing is, is some of the AI, they've changed as far as their weapon sets. Uh-huh. Like, if you notice, the knights will have 
a mix of suppressors, shotguns, or s- scatter shots, uh, inc- incendiary cannons, uh, this uh, soldiers. Uh, they primarily still just do the suppressor and the um, light rifle. And then, of course, you've got your, the crawlers are pretty much the same. But they they did something different to the knights because they don't, you they just don't seem like they fight the same to me. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It just, they seem to be a little tougher to, you know, to hit that sweet spot. I th- well, they also did that with, um, like the the new knight on the new Warzone skirmish at Dark Star, like apparently the knight there, the legendary knight has is a little more armored up and it, it is harder. I think that it was something that they talked about during either the Ghost of Meridian stream or the Warzone firefight beta stream, was that there is a new knight that is a lot harder to hit those soft spots and it also doesn't open up its front mask anymore either. Yeah, like these these will still open up the front mask for that quick headshot if you can time it. But it just seems like the the their sweet spots are you've got to be a lot more accurate when you hit them. You know, where before you just kind of hit the general area and it you'd score a hit. But the, it seems like you've got to really hit the middle of that spot to get it to take the damage that you want. And they tend to they dance around more than they used to. You know, where they they seem like they used to just lumber around, and then every once in a while, you know, they they jog to the left, jog to the right, or whatever these guys they don't hold still like they used to well why should they <laughs> well I'm, I'm not saying that they should but it made it a lot more fun to fight like i said i played for two and a half hours and i was having a blast <laughs> nice yeah i have my reason to get my wreck good i'm looking forward to playing to it i'm probably gonna like they did for Warzone turbo i'm probably going to be using a lot of my randoms in this just to get rid of randoms because i have a crap ton of random wreck cards <laughs> and then maybe save some of the big ones for the very end like actually use specific ones for round four or five one of the nice things i've heard though so far from people that have played is it is it does have that warzone or the firefight feel i think you mentioned this earlier too that kind of satisfies what firefight was for halo reach and for odst so that's nice yeah, to hear it, it, the the only real part that you're missing from the other two is the continuation of the round. You you get the five waves and that's it, at least in matchmaking. You don't get that, you know, that next round like you did in ODST or Reach when you were able to play custom. Right. You, you could play it for as long as you wanted and get it as hard, you'd get as hard as you want it. Thankfully, they don't have the Endure achievement for Halo 5. Well, I'm hoping too that if this is, if it is something where Warzone becomes a custom option, then you might be able to have sets because that was one of the things with Reach is that you had, um, well, it was technically three waves in a round and then five rounds in a set. But since they already have rounds, maybe you can just do five rounds in a set and then introduce skulls into the mix and then have it in a custom game to where you could just go longer. I think that would be cool. Uh, it'd be cool. I just I don't know that Warzone's going to have customs in Halo Five. I really hope they bring it. I do too. Don't get me wrong. I just I don't see it happening. But I've been wrong before. I think there could be quite a bit of benefit from Warzone, and I've talked to a few people, and there is definitely some interest in a Warzone league of some sort. So as far as the because you've out of all three of us, GT, you're the only one that has actually played firefight so far but just from your experience um do you think that it's going to be uh something that is going to take over kind of like the warzone arena stuff because from what it sounds like this is a lot more fun than warzone arena (laughs) for a lot of people that they will gravitate to the warzone firefight and they're the people that don't necessarily belong to a group that's specifically focuses on war warzone so regular warzone with fire with the warzone firefight available regular warzone is going to get even more competitive because you're going to see a lot more dedicated groups or teams playing warzone and the more casual of us 
are going to probably focus on Warzone Firefight. Because I, I guarantee you that's where I'm going to be. I probably won't play regular Warzone anymore other than to get my daily win. So whenever I do my daily win for the Warzone side, I do Assault because sometimes those are quick six-minute rounds. You're done. Yeah, I can't do Assault. It's just way too irritating. <laughs> I mean, it's def- it, de- it can definitely be irritating, but it's quicker to get the dailies that way. It is. It can be quicker, but there's this thing called stress management. Fair, yeah. I don't want to get so pissed off at the game that I turn it off for the night. Fair, fair enough. No, I, I, um, I don't blame you. But, you know, the firefight, it's going to fill a niche for the more casual of the more casual of the war zone players and right. give you give them a reason to actually go out and get look for their daily win and get you know, get the rec packs and stuff like that so that they can build their inventory for firefight. Because I guarantee in firefight, you are going to burn through wreck. Yeah, similar to how people did in Warzone Turbo. I mean, in Warzone Turbo, I saw that I saw that what was going to happen was I could burn through all my wreck pretty quick. Oh, and yeah, I actually right. did. I think I burned like twenty tanks. Dang! But <laughs> it was pretty early on where I decided to okay, instead of using all these nice wrecks, I'm going to just use randoms and see what I get. And that's what I started to do until my fifth gun goose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I literally off randoms I pulled five gun gooses in the row in a row. I was like, come on. <laughs> Where's the random part of this? <laughs> but there is not. I've gotten you know, I've every once in a while I'll get a ghost ghost ultra. Because these are, you know, level three, level five randoms. So Right. I've actually had a few times where I've used random and have been very fortunate with the outcome. <laughs> oh, one time I pulled a random, uh, level five random and got a Wraith Ultra. I was very happy with that. Yeah. That was worth three boss kills. I think. And I, I don't know how many Spartan kills, but. Yeah, one time I got a a fuel rod with a level three to help finish off a or as an assault match. And then um, sometimes I'll get lucky with the, the random level fives for vehicles and get tanks. I never use the random deal at all. Like I, if I want to go for something, I'm going to go for something that I want. I just well, that's like- where, that's why I was burning him in, in turbo because it didn't really matter. If, yeah. it, if I didn't get something I like, I could wait, you know, a minute and pull another random and see what happens. Yeah. It's, I mean, it definitely is the random stuff, but I have, I've gotten some pretty good stuff out of the randoms before. Uh, oh, it's truly random. Wait, 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 wait. Eric Hebu said he's gotten three or four Ma- Hannibal Mantises from random ultra rare vehicles. What? Yeah, yeah. What, well, we what don't voodoo have is this? Your luck, Eric what, what voodoo is this? Hacker. <laughs> Anyways, so that's pretty much. The Warzone Firefight beta it is live now and then through Tuesday, April 19th. So definitely make sure you get in your uh, set of games. There's also the Mythic Warzone Rec Pack, which is available during the duration of the beta. And it is worth 80,000 uh, rec points if you want to go that route or nine ninety nine. So same as all the other limited time stuff that we've seen so far. And then it includes... 10 mythic single use power weapons uh one and then one ultra rare or legendary weapon or vehicle certification so i'm still working on my golds so i'm actually not going to be i don't think i'll i'll use do anything with the mythic wars back i might buy one just to see what what it's like but other than that i'm still going to be working on my golds because i i get two ultra rare or legendary vehicle or weapon unlocks that way i did buy one pack I'll probably just do my one to open up on, you know, my rec pack opening video. Right. The fact that it's all mythic weapons though is ridiculous. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of nuts. I got one of them and I got, man, I got so many things like what, what's the count that they have on those that are set? Is it random or is it specific to each time you get a rec pack from that? What do you mean? 
what you get is random, but it is you get a guaranteed so many mythic and the other. Yeah, ten ten yeah. ten mythics. Okay. Yeah, because that's what I got. Because I didn't know if it was just random how many you get, or if it was just random, just all together, just all random. Yeah. What the heck? I have another Spartan Company combination reward pack in here. <laughs> I've been getting been, a yeah. bunch. Someone's been going to yeah, work because there have been a lot yeah. recently. And I guess an update on that while we're on the subject. We actually have th- six of our out of 33 kill commendations at level three. So someone's been going to work. I mean, I know I've been playing every day, but there have been people going to work in our Spartan company yeah. to try to get the that up there. So way to go, folks, for really c- coming to the plate on that. And we only have two level ones left. Uh, the last two that we have on our way to um, getting those done, uh, let me pull that up real quick. Our first strike, so getting our first strike medal or the first kill in the middle of the match, and we still need 110 of those to finish level two. And then the pain train, which is kill an enemy Spartan with a shoulder bash, and we need 97 of those. So, really, not too much longer on both of those to reach level two. But we've, I mean, someone out there, I don't know if it's Keys or someone else, but Yes, Eric, but we know you have Achilles. You're part of Filthy Animals. Of course you have Achilles. You're probably close to getting the helmet, <laughs> for all we know. <laughs> I, I think somebody needs to take a time out. <laughs> Eric, who's in the running, I think, among like maybe 20 or 30 other people trying to get the first 152 in Halo 5. I don't know. I, we, someone's got to be close. Well, no. I, I, I'm thinking we'll probably see a 152 probably probably late next month or early june would be my guess right well the one thing is with this warzone firefight it's gonna help us with can't we get along which one's that one uh kill covenant enemies oh yeah so people hop on that definitely hop on we that should be able to finish that one up by tuesday how many more do we need we need, we've got 200 of 9600 to make level five 200 of 9,600? That's yeah. a... So we need 9,400 kills. That's a lot. Did you see how many Covenant would spawn in when they'd spawn in? No. I haven't played Warzone yet. Yeah, like 50. I haven't played Firefight yet. Dang. Believe me, there's there's plenty of opportunity. Well, I'll be playing the heck out of it on Saturday, that's for sure. I'm going to be playing the heck out of it every minute of free time I got. Eric, how do you have only... Oh, you have 1.3 million XP left? My gosh. He, he says he's 147 with just under 1.3 million XP left. Yeah. And I'm looking at him right now, and he's about the 55% mark on, on his 147 rank. Oh, you're not in Filthy Annals anymore? He's, he's under We Need Achilles. Oh, uh, so he's helping other people with, out with, out with uh, Achilles, I guess. Hmm. Okay. Dang. Anyways. Uh, tangent. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that, but yeah. So the firefight stuff, as far as um all that goes, I'm really looking forward to it. We're going to be playing it just after the podcast here, and we bumped up the podcast so we could be playing it afterwards. So we we canceled yesterday's Warzone Wednesdays because we knew firefight was coming out. So we're going to do that actually after the podcast tonight, and I'll be playing quite a bit of it on Saturday actually. So hoping to get quite a few games then. On playing firefight, it's definitely a good time to get those enemy commendations, like GT was saying. Even the like the personal ones, it's a great time for those. Yeah, yeah, it's a good time to work on your weapon kills and or your weapon commendations and your enemy commendations. Yep, Warzone Turbo was so much fun. <laughs> I really want Fiesta back so I can work on some of those other weapon commendations. Fiesta was the best for weapon commendations. Except for the spanker, because the spanker never was in the rotation. <laughs> yeah, but I wish I'd have got to play more Fiesta, but I didn't. Yeah, me too. Although I was grinding it out for the last, not this last time it was up, but the weekend before, like the first weekend it was out, I was grinding that for a couple of days. I got a lot of my accommodation weapon accommodations done for it too. All right, a couple other news things to talk about before we close out the podcast for tonight. We're actually going to be pushing the campaign stuff to the show for next week. And we're actually not going to be doing the show 
on Thursday next week because I will be in transit to Boston for PAX East then. So we're actually going to, I think, pre-record that one, finish up the campaign stuff, and then post that on Thursday next week when we would uh, normally be recording at that time. So I think that's what we're going to be doing, but uh, stay tuned for that. They have come out with some new stances and size options for the Sandboxer 3D Spartan Prince. And sadly, when I moved, the one that I had from San Diego Comic Con last year broke at the ankles. Oh. Yeah. That's not good. No. And it was free for me then. I got it for free. And now I'm having to... That really sucks. Yeah. I mean, I could glue it back together, but it's just not the same. Yeah. It's just not the same. Well, now you got a chance to get a bigger one. Yeah. That costs $189. It's just money dust. What are you going to do? Take it with you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, maybe. <laughs> now, but they have new stances that you can use, and uh, they have different sizes now as well. So there's. Uh, trying to figure out where they posted the sizes but uh, they had the three sizes that uh, that they had before and then they have this new ridiculously large size which is uh 20 inches tall is that right laird if you're still in here you know where that is a 20 inch spark where the heck would i put one <laughs> i know where i would put mine <laughs> I-, I have a hard enough time with the 11 inch statue of Locke. Hmm. He keeps trying to fall on my keyboard. <laughs> oh, they've got him in. It, it's it. They've got him kind of in a running stance. Ah, uh, so okay. He's not real stable at all. I I probably need to put him on a piece of wood and screw up through his feet so he doesn't fall over so much. <laughs> Too funny. Yeah, they really should have put him on a base of some type. Uh, afterthought. But anyway. So I'm trying to figure out where the sizes are here real quick. I'm not finding it, but they definitely are trying to bump up the game there, which is crazy. Yeah, I I want to say it was 20 inches for the huge one. I think it's 189.99. Yeah, I'm trying to find it, but it's not popping up anywhere. Anyways, so yeah, that happened. And then there is uh more information on the Pro League that actually just got announced this week as well and let me pull that up real quick where did i put it okay here we go and there's actually an event happening at pax east as well so the first the first um pro league event is inviting four teams uh to the um what is this they're calling the the pro league invitational at pax east 2016 presented by esl and it's going to be evil geniuses optic gaming Enigma 6, which I guess is a team name change because it has Boo Boo Dubo on it and Kratos. I don't think, I don't remember them being called Enigma 6 during the HCS. So I, I'm, that might be a team name change. Uh, and then Team Envious. So those are going to be the four teams um, that are going to be at PAX East. So going to have some courage on that. I actually had to change my travel to accommodate that because they announced that I think on Monday this week. No, Tuesday. And I was originally planning to leave at three o'clock on Sunday. So I had to actually bump my train back to like 1038 at night. So that would be fun. But that's going down on Sunday, April 24th at 1130 a.m. Eastern time. And it's going to be casted on Twitch. Uh, it'd probably be safe to assume that Bravo is going to be casting maybe with Strong Side and Golden Boy, possibly. So... I'll be there for that. Try to get a few more interviews there as well. Uh, in addition to that event, though, there are going to be a number of qualifying events leading up to the actual season play, which begins in June. So in April, there is the PAX East Land Qualifier. Uh, that's going to be the 24th. And then there is a invite online qualifier. So uh, based on the Halo World Championship placings, there's going to be 16 teams invited to participate in the online qualifier for April 30th. And then the top eight will advance to the May 8th land tournament, which is, and then that's going to be a qualification tournament. Uh, and then there's going to be a last chance qualifier on May 21st through 22nd. Uh, and then in between there, 
there's an open qualifier May 14th and 15th. Uh, and then top teams from that will also go into the last chance qualifier. And then the season play happens between June and July with season finals going into it to some point in the play uh, future afterwards. Um, so yeah, there's, uh, there's those details. We'll probably cover that a little bit more next time we are trying to wrap this up, but uh, there are more details of that over at halo.gg and they've actually updated that from the Halo World Championship to the Pro League stuff as well. So make sure you check that out. We have some other kind of sad news. BS Angel is no longer at 343. She was one of the, I think, most involved community people that Halo has ever had. And she was one of the community greats when she was actually part of the community before her time at 343. She ran the blog Hottie McBloggy which covered a lot of different Halo stuff. She did a lot of stuff with Halo screenshots and highlighting community stuff. And then when she was community manager for 343, she did a lot of stuff with community updates and just being involved with sharing community content. And it was very, very nice to have her in that position because she did so much for the community. And it's, it's just one of those things where it truly blew my mind on how involved she was with the community. It didn't matter who you were. It didn't matter where you were. Like, if you tweeted at her or something, she usually retweeted with, like, or tweeted back at you within, like, a minute. And I, it, it's, like, just any, like, it's just crazy how, like, involved she was. Like, if it actually weren't for her, I probably wouldn't know a lot of the Halo people I know today. Like, one of the main reasons why I met a lot of people, including um, just everyone, like part of the Ready Up Live crew and stuff like that, was because of the community playdates with 343. We all got in a, a lobby together for, at some point, and we all started talking, and that's how a big part of just how I kind of knew everyone. It was, it's, just, it's just really sad to see her go. She did such a phenomenal job for 343. She will truly be missed. Yeah, she definitely will. It's one of those things that it's hard to see her go. And I mean, from what we understand, it's not like she left on bad terms or anything. Um, she still really enjoys Halo. And, and she's even said on Twitter, she's really happy to be back on the community side of things. Sadly, Heidi McBloggy doesn't look like it's coming back because the domain, she let the domain lapse last year at some point And now it's owned by someone else. But it'll be interesting to see how involved, if she gets heavily involved back with the Halo community. but. In her words, she's not she's not leaving Halo. She still really loves Halo, which is awesome. Um, but best wishes, Jess, to wherever your uh, career takes you. Um, hope to see you back on the podcast at some point, since you're now kind of out of the clutches of three four three PR. <laughs> so you have an open invitation to come on the podcast, uh, and I hope you I hope you take advantage of that because she believe it or not she was one of the first. Yes, whenever I relaunched the podcast back in October of 2008, she was one of the first guests on the show that we had to help get us back in kind of the audience of, of the Halo masses. And she was really cool to to be a part of. And, and whenever she got, when she got to 343, my first convention experience was being invited to be on a community panel at Halo Fest which was my first convention I ever attended. And I got to go visit 343. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, man. It's Well, she started, like, she, when did she join 343? It was during Reach, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, it was during Reach. I think it was either late 2010 or early 2011. I want to say late 2010. Okay. Yeah, because I remember the, she shared a tweet stating um, her first badge she ever received was the staff for Halo uh, Reach's launch. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it would have been 2010 because Reach was 2010. It's just, I really wish I would have actually met her when she was part of the community manager spot. Um, anytime I've ever talked with her, like, I missed her on every occasion it seemed. <laughs> um, the, the, the year she was at RTX um, as the community manager, the next year I went, she wasn't there. The, the first time I actually met her was at PAX, or E3. And it, she's probably one of the realest people you ever talked to, too. Like, she, it was weird to, like, think that she was part of PR. Like, it, it, it was her job to actually talk with people. But she had, it was just, she 
they, she loved hanging out with everyone, it seemed. Like, she knew everyone, too, which was awesome. And she understood the community, which was one of the reasons why she made such a great community manager. Exactly. I mean, no offense to Bravo, but I don't think there could be another community manager quite like Jess. No. And there's it, 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 there really isn't. I mean, it doesn't matter what game, what franchise, anything. Like, I don't think anyone could ever retrace her footsteps ever. It's 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 as hard as it is to say and as snobby it is to say, it is the honest truth. Yeah. For as small as she is, she's left some <laughs> big shoes to fill. Very true. That's actually a very appropriate thing to say, I think. Yeah. I mean, she she left some gigantic shoes to fill with that. But we wish her the best with wherever she decides to go with her career. I mean, the, with what she's done, it leaves a lot of opportunities open for her. So hopefully we'll get to see her around the convention still. I'm assuming that she will probably stay in the Seattle area. So PAX Prime will probably still be a very realistic spotting for her. At least I, I hope it's I'm that sure way. she'll be at PAX. I'm sure she'll be at PAX Prime. You will be missed, Jess, within the, the realms of the Halo Studio, but it's nice to have you back on the community side. So that's that. And that's going to wrap it up for us tonight. There's some campaign campaign stuff. Blah, blah, blah. There's some campaign stuff. Wow. I can't say campaign. Campaign? <laughs> wow. Um, there is some campaign stuff that we'll be covering in the next episode, like I mentioned earlier. And we'll probably just go ahead and do the last four missions because that's all we have left. I think it's mission, missions 12 through 15, which we haven't uh, gone through yet. So we'll we'll cover some of those. And again, that will probably be a pre-recorded show and not a live show. So stay tuned for, for that. Um, we are giving away a $10 code after the podcast is done here on the live side of things for the recording. So... We do giveaways every once in a while on our stream. So if it's, if you listen to us via download and are interested in actually listening to us live and maybe getting some goodies out of it, then definitely encourage you guys to check us out on our Twitch channel. You can head on over to podtackler.com slash Twitch and find our Twitch channel, which is where we stream our podcasts and our customs, which is Frag and Fridays with Mr. Godzilla T at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I am working on trying to get some new overlay assets and then get streams configured so we can actually start broadcasting Tactical Tuesdays and Warzone Wednesdays. So hopefully we'll be getting that up to snuff here soon and doing more Halo streams that way. There's also the Achieving Halo stuff, which Godzilla T is working on as well, which we're actually doing another recording session on Saturday. You want to give some of the details on that, GT? Are you going to have the podcast out before Saturday? Uh, yes, it's actually going to be out tomorrow, believe it or not. Good. Well, good. Well, if you guys listen to it in time, uh, Saturday the 16th, uh, I will be doing a re- recording of Achieving Halo for the third mission. I can't think what the name of it is right at the moment. But anyway, uh, if you would like to be involved in that, please message me. Uh, you can get me at get uh, Godzilla Space T on Xbox Live. You can get me at Godzilla Todd on Twitter, or you can message me on the company forums. Uh, I also have a post on there, and we do also have a post on our uh, website forums that you can uh, get a hold of me and let me know that you want to join. Uh, best places are either Twitter or uh, my gamer tag. So if you want to join in, just let me know. I've been trying to do them about 5 o'clock Eastern time on Saturdays. If I get a group of people that can do it another time, and we can all agree on a time, then I will uh, definitely make that happen. So just let me know. Cool. So yeah, definitely check that out. And um, the mission that we're thinking of, I think, is uh, is Meridian Station the fourth one? or the It's Glassed. That's it. It's Glassed as the third mission. Meridian, Meridian yeah. Station is the fourth one. It's the hub one. Yeah, I totally blanked that. Which, that one will be a quick one because it's literally you just go around and collect the intel and then finish. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know. You're going to show the Easter egg? That, which one? Is there more than one? Ball? Yeah, the soccer ball. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you got the vending machine, too. 
Well, the vending machine is for the soccer ball. Oh, isn't that where the... No, that's not where the weapon vending machine is. Never mind. No, that's on... That's on Glast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, I will be showing that Easter egg on uh, Glast. Cool. I'll probably... We will probably do uh, Glast and then uh, Meridian Station all together. Okay. Or we'll do Meridian Station and Unconfirmed together. But uh, the recordings are... They only take about an hour. Hour, hour and a half, depending on how quickly people get in. So. The more people that are on time, the faster we get done. There you go. All right. So make sure you check that out this weekend if you're able to attend. Uh, that'll be a really cool way to get involved with some of the stuff that we're trying to do. There are a few things that we're also trying to do as well, but that's kind of one of the big things, um, at least from a YouTube perspective. So you can definitely check out our YouTube channel as well by heading over to podtechler.com slash YouTube. And then we're also on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can check those out by the respective links doing com slash that social media site. Um, that's all the stuff I think I need to plug. Uh, remember to check out the beta this weekend uh, going on until Saturday, uh, or sorry, not Saturday, Tuesday, April 19th. We got the extended day, which is awesome. So even more time to have fun with the mode. And Make sure you check out our uh, podcast network. We are part of a group of gaming-specific podcasts, which include Guardian Radio, Critcast, Learning Cliff, Work in Progress, and How to Murder Time. If you're looking for some other gaming podcasts to get involved with, definitely recommend you check those out. And then also make sure you check out the latest episode of Drunken Halo, which I was invited to be on by Justin over there and had a really good time. It turned out to be a, um interview Dustin podcast so they asked the they asked their community on facebook and um slack chat which is the kind of like a almost like a irc chat thing that they have for their community but they asked for questions over there and it was about two and a half hours of answering questions uh fair warning it's not exactly safe for work in terms of of language so very explicit (laughs) <laughs> yes, yes, they are a very explicit podcast. So definitely go on over and check that out if you're interested. And um, I have to give a shout out to Drunken Hail guys because they're they're actually a really cool uh, group. Uh, just from the podcast that they do, uh, they're brothers, which is really cool. And uh, they consistently do one v ones that have a, a great turnout, and it's been very successful. I think this is the fourth or fifth one that they've done that they're currently working on right now and it's just been uh really cool to see them grow as a community and a podcast so a huge shout out to them and then one of our other uh kind of halo podcast veterans griffball hub is also um into their halo 5 season of griffball which from what i understand is actually going pretty well and for anyone that's going to be at pax east i'm going to be there uh, Griffball Hub's going to be there. There's going to be a few other Halo community members there, along with, obviously, the uh, Pro Circuit PAX East Invitational. So if you are there, uh, please stop me and say hi. I will have Podtacular swag um, that you can pick up if you're there. And then hopefully get to see some people on Sunday during the finals. I guess it's, it's the only day, so I guess just during the event, really. But, um, yeah, hope to see some people there. Thanks for tuning into this episode, and we will see you all next week. Um, Ten dollar gift code happening after we're done hitting the stop button. But for everyone else, thank you for tuning in. We will see you all next week. Keep on fragging firefight.